Many believe the Tower of London to be incredibly bloody, with many executions and episodes of torture occurring within the famous walls of the palace. However, there was a site just outside the tower that saw more bloodshed than within, as only really seven people were executed inside the tower during the Tudor period. Later, it was used as an execution site during the First and Second World War for spies to meet their ends against a firing squad, but as mentioned before, more bloodshed occurred outside the walls of England's famous palace than inside it, and literally this happened 100 metres away at Tower Hill. Join us today as we look at London's famous execution site, Tower Hill, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Today, Tower Hill is mostly known for its location just north of the Tower of London's moat, and also the fact it's home to a DLR and tube station. The passengers that pass through Tower Hill on a daily basis are probably unaware that they're passing very close to a place where many of Tudor England's most famous people who offended the monarchy were beheaded. Many high profile executions throughout history were carried out there, and it's mostly where members of the nobility met their end. In London, commoners were hanged at Tyburn and later at Newgate, and there were many other locations across England for hangings. However, executions were a public spectacle, and were supposed to have a deterrent effect to put off the general public from dissenting or plotting against a monarchy for example. Members of the royal family, or those of noble birth, who had special permission were executed in private within the walls of the Tower of London. Tower Hill seems to have been a rather convenient place to publicly execute the condemned who had become a pain to the monarchy. The most common method of execution at Tower Hill was beheading, but there were other methods used. Richard Weich was burnt at the stake for Lollardism in 1440 there, and William Collingbourne was hanged, drawn and quartered in 1484 for favouring the cause of Henry Tudor during Richard III's reign. In 1532, another three people were executed being hanged, drawn and quartered for coining, making counterfeit coins which was considered treasonous. The works of Victorian Walter Thornbury explains more about the Tower Hill as an area. He writes, of Tower Hill, that historical and bloodstained ground to the northwest of the tower, sometimes a large plot of ground, now greatly straightened by encroachments for gardens and houses. Upon this hill is always readily prepared, as the charges of the city, a large scaffold and gallows of timber, for the execution of such traitors or transgressors, as are delivered out of the tower, or otherwise to the sheriffs of London, by writ there to be executed. An old plan of the tower in 1563 shows us the post of the scaffold for state criminals, a good deal north of Tower Street. In the reign of Edward IV, the scaffold was erected at the charge of the King's officers, and many controversies arose at various times about the respective boundaries between the city and the lieutenant of the tower. On the Tower Hill scaffold perished nearly all the prisoners whose wrongs and sorrows and crimes, the great Sir Thomas More, the wise servant of a corrupt king, Bishop Fisher, a staunch adherent to the Old Faith, Cromwell, Earl of Essex, and the poet Earl of Surrey, all victims of the bad same monarch. In the reigns of Edward VI and Mary in ghastly procession after the masked headsman placed Lord Seymour in due course followed by the brother who put him to death, the proud protector Somerset, that poor weak young noble, Lady Jane Grey's husband, Lord Guilford Dudley, and Sir Thomas Wyatt, the rash objector to a Spanish marriage. The victims of Charles's folly followed in due time, the dark and arrogant Strafford, who came like a crowned conqueror to his death, then his sworn ally, the narrow-browed fanatical Lord. The Restoration Cavaliers too their vengeance next, and to the tower, pass those true patriots. With this, Thornbury writes of those who were executed upon Tower Hill, and he continues, Blood ceased to flow on Tower Hill after the execution of the Duke of Monmouth, until the pretender's fruitless rebellions of 1715 and 1745. In 1746, Mr Radcliffe was executed here. He had been a prisoner in the tower for his share in the rebellion of 1715, but succeeded in escaping. At the last execution which took place on Tower Hill, that of Lord Lovett, on April 9, 1747, a scaffolding built near Barking Alley fell with nearly a thousand persons on it. Twelve of them were killed. Lovett, in spite of the awful situation, seemed to enjoy the downfall of so many Whigs. 
so one of the first notable executions that took place on Tower Hill was that of Simon Sudbury, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Sudbury had been inside the Tower of London when the Peasants' Revolt stormed the fortress and seized him. He was so unpopular that he was dragged to Tower Hill and beheaded with seven or eight blows to his neck. In 1502, James Tyrrell, Richard III's former ally, and the man who admitted to murdering the prince in the tower, despite being tortured, was beheaded on Tower Hill also. John Fisher, the Bishop of Rochester, who disagreed with Henry VIII's religious changes, was also executed here, as was ex Tudor Lord Chancellor Thomas More and Thomas Cromwell, the former best friend and extremely close ally of Henry VIII. Today, a simple memorial to those who were executed at Tower Hill is on display. It's found near to a World War II memorial, and it reads, To commemorate the tragic history and in many cases the martyrdom of those who for the sake of their faith, country or ideals, stake their lives and lost. On this site more than 125 were put to death, the names of some of whom are recorded here. The executions of some of the most famous condemned who were killed at the site are then listed on the panels, where the site of the scaffold once stood. Near to where this is, there was also a place called Little Tower Hill or East Smithfield. Here executions and less punishments such as a pillory were also used. In 1700 at Little Tower Hill, three people were hanged for murder, with their bodies then being displayed publicly in chains. One example of someone being placed in the pillory at Little Tower Hill was Jonathan Easton in 1707, who was convicted and fined £10 for cheating two men was then placed in the pillory for a number of hours. So the whole area of Tower Hill, including the Tower of London, is a place which is synonymous with crime and punishment. Much of the area is shrouded in the brutal punishments and executions for which the area was made famous. Tower Hill saw much more bloodshed than the tower itself did, and many of the most famous icons of the time, who were deemed to be traitors or dangerous by the monarchy, met their end at the scaffold on Tower Hill. What today is a very busy place in which people pass by for work or to get their connecting tube train, once was a place which was reserved for the darkest form of public entertainment and deterrence. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.